So, how much of your that are you letting turn into that? Let's go over my two tricks that I've figured out over the years on how to not waste any more material than I have to. Let's go. So we start by digging out the quarter inch sheet of steel that we want to use for this project. I don't cut a whole lot of quarter inch, but we have this sheet that I've used before. It's at the bottom of the stack. We'll cycle through and find it. Forklift's a big helper here. The last time we used this sheet of quarter inch, I was cutting out some slingshots for my buddy Zach over at ZH Fabrications. And when we did so, what I did was save the file that we used to cut those parts exactly as it was cut into the sheet. We're gonna bring that back up on the computer, reposition the new parts we need to cut for this job around the old ones, and most critically, square the table back off of a known point on that sheet, in this case, the upper left corner, and that will let us place our new parts right up next to the old ones, not wasting any material that we didn't have to. If this was a part that was not rectangular or didn't lay out in a nice rectangle, it really shines because you can tuck parts into the crevices of other parts. You just save a lot on your material if you use this trick. The whole idea is save a file on your computer, keep it ready. Mine, I just save as a quarter inch, a 3 16 a 10 gauge, whatever it is. So they're right there at the top of my file list. That lets me bring them back up easily, not lose them. And once the sheet's been used up, I delete that file. And next time we start up again, I open a new file. So it's pretty rare for me to actually catch the tip blowing out when I'm zoomed in on it, so I thought I'd leave this in here. As you can see, you get this green flash, and that's because the consumables in plasma cutting are made of copper, and they're burning, that's why it's green. After, you know, Going back, changing the tip out, which isn't a big deal, especially with this HTP machine. The consumables, it's like $9, something like that. Every time you gotta change everything out. And I changed the electrode and the tip at the same time. It's not worth saving a dollar or two and risking getting a bad cut on a sheet where you might be paying two, three, four, ten dollars $10 a square foot for that metal. And here we go with a little close up, not a great one of the tips we've got brand new consumables ones that are just getting ready to burn out and these ones i just pulled off the table everything just starts to erode away when they go bad get right back into cutting with why not an arc shot just so you can see a little bit closer up and then finish out the cut all the parts need to be taken off the table, of course, and I'll hand those over to Tommy to wire brush and clean up so we can ship these to the customer. And just to cut in, if y'all have not, you need to check out these magnetic chucks. They are a major time saver. You see, you know, they're holding the part down. You're not having to clamp two different spots on each face. Awesome to have. It's not a sponsored thing by any means, but there's an affiliate link down in the description. In the meantime, I'm gonna go back over to the computer and make sure that I save this new file. I have a little master folder where all of my regularly accessed files go, and this is one of them. The last thing to do, other than checking out the parts, making sure they're good, is stack that sheet of quarter inch back at the bottom of our pile. Like I said, we don't use it very often, so it lives down there at the bottom of the pile, and that does just fine for what we need it to. Before we get to the second one of my tricks, I do want to say thank you to all the patrons who are supporting what I'm doing here. You know, it's a uh, even in these weird times. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Let's jump to trick number two. Our second trick is simply nesting. Nesting is the idea of squishing all your parts together on a sheet in the most efficient way. Hypertherm has their ProNest software. They have a free trial, allegedly. I've reached out to try it a couple times before I start paying for it, and I've never heard back from them. So I've heard good things about it. I think it's 30 bucks a month right now, but we're gonna jump over to this open source free counterpoint uh, called deepnest.io. It's 
pretty simple. It's not as advanced as ProNest by any means, but we're going to import in our pieces as an SVG or a DXF. It says it can work with CDRs, but it doesn't seem to for me. We'll define the size of our sheet, in this case 96 by 48, and then hit a little checkbox to say that's the sheet. You can also change quantities of all your pieces there, and then it's going to start nesting. Now I'm running on a very beefy computer, so this goes really fast on my editing machine. On a regular computer, this is going to take a minute. It's, it's not super quick. Uh, it's going to iterate a bunch of times and try it out. You can tell it the spacing to leave between your parts. You can tell it how many different rotations to try, whether to try you know, 45 degree rotations, 30 degree rotations, on and on and on and it will chew on it. I have it set to try and smash everything over to the left of the screen as much as possible and that's exactly what it's doing here. I can then go look through the different solutions that it came up with and pick the one I like and then we'll export that as either an SVG or a DXF and I'll bring that over into my CorelDRAW software that runs the table or at least starts the software chain that does in this case, I'm cutting parts for a friend of mine who drew these up and sent them to me. We'll bring them over the table and start the cut. It's super simple and nesting like this is a great way to save on the material that you're burning up. You know, I used to work with a guy who would just slap stuff down on the table and his drawings drove me insane because he was wasting, you know, 40 50 percent of the sheet sometimes I'd redraw his pieces and end up getting two three four more parts onto a sheet instead of you know so instead of five or six parts you're getting 10 or 11 off of a sheet it's such a material savings and it takes so little time to do you can do it by hand of course but having some software to give you a little bit of a help is nice it's convenient it's worth doing most of the time if you're gonna be you know, if it's a lot of little parts, I think it's worth doing. And really here, the goal is just to save money. It's a simple, a penny saved is a penny earned type of situation. You know, if you're paying, like I am, 125-ish dollars for a sheet of 3 16 like you see on screen, and you can get 10% more yield out of those, and you're cutting 10 of those a month, that's 125 bucks in your pocket. I recently redrew one of the files that I cut fairly often for the Weld It Yourself kits and got half of an extra kit out of a sheet. So instead of six, we're cutting six and a half. It's not a big deal, but over time it definitely adds up. It's totally worth doing. My waste is down to around about 7% and the way you figure that is the weight of sheets I'm buying versus the weight of what we take to the scrapyard. It's 7% of what comes in the door goes out to the scrapyard. I cannot complain about that at all. So I hope you guys got something from that. You know, like I said, my math says that my scrap bill minus my initial purchase is around 7%. Of course, some of that's lost to BBs and whatnot, so it's probably eight or nine realistically. If you got something from that, hey, stick around. If you want to see a little bit more, maybe get some of the behind the scenes stuff, we've got Patreon. And until next time, guys, thanks for stopping by.